Let's look at an equation where the derivative requires implicit differentiation in addition to the chain rule. Here we're being asked to find the equation of the tangent line to 2 times the quantity of x squared plus y squared squared equals 100xy at the point 4, 2. To find the equation of the tangent line, we'll first have to find the slope of the tangent line, which requires the derivative with respect to x. This equation has factors of y. When I differentiate those factors, implicit differentiation will be required. And when I take the derivative of this part of the equation, involves a quantity to a power, the chain rule will be uh, required. It's worth noting that the graph of the equation looks like this. And the tangent line, whose equation we're required to find, will look like this. We can tell, we can make some um, estimations about the equation of this tangent line. I know that the slope will be positive. It will be a relatively steep slope. And the y-intercept of this equation will be negative. To find the equation of that tangent line, I'll have to first take the derivative of the equation and use that derivative to find the slope of the tangent line. This derivative on the left side is going to require the chain rule because I have 2 times a quantity that is squared. I'll begin by taking the power of 2 times the coefficient of 2 to get 4 times x squared plus y squared to the power of 1 and multiply that by the derivative of the inside of the quantity x squared plus y squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of y squared with respect to x is 2y, but because it's a y, I multiply by a factor of the derivative of y with respect to x, which I'll represent with y prime. On the right side of the equation, I have 100x times y. I'm going to consider 100x together to be a first factor and y to be a second factor of a product. And I will apply the product rule to take this derivative. The product rule states that if you have a product, the derivative is the first factor unchanged, 100x in this case, times the derivative of the second factor. Well, the derivative of y is 1, but because I'm taking a derivative with respect to x, I'm going to have to include a factor of y prime. The second part of the product rule states that the second factor is to be left unchanged, and that's multiplied by the derivative of the first factor. The derivative of 100x is simply 100. I have a derivative, but to solve for y prime, I'm going to have to expand the left side of this equation, the left side of the derivative. I'll begin that expansion with the distribution of, a, of the 4. I'll take 4 times x squared and 4 times y squared, which yields 4x squared plus 4y squared. And that will next have to be multiplied by 2x plus 2y times y prime. On the right side of the equation, I can clean this up to be 100x times y prime plus 100y. Continuing expanding the left side of the equation is going to involve distributing the 4x squared to both terms in the second quantity and distributing the 4y squared to both terms in the second quantity. 4x squared times 2x is 8x to the third power. 4x squared times 2y y prime is 8x squared y times y prime. 4y squared times 2x is 8xy squared. And 4y times 2y y prime is 8y to the third power times y prime. The right side of the equation will remain unchanged at this point. But now that the left side is expanded, I can move all factors that involve a y prime to the left and all factors that do not to the right. In this situation, on the left side of the equation, I already have two factors that have a y prime. So I'm going to write those two factors on the left side of this equation unchanged. They are 8x squared y times y prime and 8y cubed times y prime. I'm also going to, from the right side of the equation, subtract 100x times y prime from both sides. 
On the right side of the equation, I'm going to put the three factors, or I'm sorry, the three terms that do not have a factor of y prime. There's already 100y on the right, and I will additionally subtract 8x to the third and 8xy squared from both sides of the equation to move those to the right. And at this point, I have three factors that involve a y prime on the left and all the factors that do not on the right. And I'm two steps away from solving for y prime. First, I'll factor y prime out to the front of the left side of the equation, which yields y prime times the quantity of 8x squared y plus 8y to the third power minus 100x. And that is equal to 100y minus 8x to the third minus 8xy squared. And then to solve for y prime, I'll just have to divide both sides of the equation by 8x squared y plus 8y to the third minus 100x. And that means y prime, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to 100y minus 8x to the third minus 8 xy squared all over 8x squared y plus 8y to the third minus 100x. Now it's worth noting that there is a common factor of 4 in the numerator and the denominator, and if I reduce the numerator and the denominator by that factor, I'll have my derivative in simplest form, 25y minus 2x to the third, minus 2xy squared, all over 2x squared y plus 2y to the third, minus 25x. I'll then use that derivative to find the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line at the point 4 comma 2 requires me to substitute a 4 for x and a 2 for y into the derivative, into the derivative. I found my derivative, and I'll go ahead and copy it now with a value of 2 for y and a value of 4 everywhere I see an x. After completing this arithmetic, we find that 25 times 2 is 50, minus 2 times 4 to the third is 128, minus 2 times 4 times 2 squared, which is 32, all over the three terms in the bottom simplified to 64, positive 16, and negative 100, which means the slope of this tangent line is negative 110 over negative 20, in lowest terms, positive 11 halves. Then using the slope of the tangent line, which is 11 halves, and the point on the tangent line, 4, 2, can simply write the equation. y minus 2 equals the slope 11 halves times x minus 4. y minus 2 equals 11 halves x minus 44 halves, which in lowest terms is 22. Adding 2 to both sides of the equation gives us our final answer for the problem, the slope of the tangent line, to the original equation at the point 4, 2, which is y equals 11 halves x, after adding 2 to both sides, minus 20. y equals 11 halves x minus 20. To review, to find the equation of the tangent line to this equation at the point 4, 2, I first had to take the derivative with respect to x, the original equation, which was 25y minus 2x to the third minus 2xy squared all over 2x squared y plus 2y to the third minus 25x. I then substituted the point 4, 2 for x and y and found that the slope of the tangent line was 11 halves. 
and then found that the tangent line at that point, 4, 2, was y equals 11 halves x minus 20. Graphing y equals 11 halves x minus 20 on top of the original graph of the equation, I find uh, that it is the graph of the blue line. This is the graph that touches the, the point or the, that touches the curve at the point 4, 2. The slope is 11 halves. The y-intercept is negative 20, which makes sense when looking at this graph. The final answer to the problem is, again, y equals 11 halves x minus 20.